and welcome to Neophyte.tv, the technology show for the not-so-geeky. My name is Ben Friedman, and we have a, a special show today, one of these on-location uh, shows. Uh, we are at uh, Blue Smoke Fine Cigars here in uh, Arizona, and I'm here with the proprietor, Dean D'Astasio. Dean, thanks for joining us. No problem, Ben. So uh, a while back, I went to an event where they were uh, uh, offering cigars there, and uh, you know, I was amazed that, uh, at some of the technology I saw. In fact, uh, we take a look at the uh, stuff we've got arrayed. We've got digital readouts, carbon fiber. We've got uh, torches here. And, uh, you know, cigars have been around since, you know, the dinosaurs roamed the earth. Humans have always used tobacco for ceremonial and medicinal purposes and what have you. So I looked at all this tech, and my first question for you is, do you really need to have a lot of tech to enjoy <laughs> cigars? Yeah, absolutely not. I mean, it's a... Uh it's a grassroots, you know, basic foundation of, of just enjoying uh, tobacco and a cigar with another person. I mean, the, you need something to, you don't even need a cutter to cut your cigar. A lot of people still bite it off with their teeth. They bite it off, yep. caveman style. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, I got some friends that do that, and that's the classic way. And if you can rub two sticks together to create some flame, you're good to go. I, uh, I grew up uh, watching the A Team. Do, yeah. do you remember that show back oh, in the yeah. 80s? The A Team and uh, Hannibal, I think it was no matter what happened, always seemed to have a cigar in his pocket and he would just bite the end off. And, and he loved it when a plan came together. <laughs> no, no. So, uh, you know, um, we, we thought we'd do some uh, shows on some of the cigar tech. I, I put a letter out there to a few of the cigar companies. They've sent me a plethora of stuff here. So uh, let's just dive right into this and we'll, uh, we'll talk about some of the uh, stuff we have today here. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab, uh, this is a, um, I guess a cigar cutter from uh, Calibri and, uh, whoa, and uh, snaps open like that. Looks rather dangerous. In fact, uh, I, I would, you could probably use this on Al Qaeda or something to get some, uh, some, <laughs> some, some, some information out of them. What, what does this device do, Dean? Well, so this device is uh, to, uh, to cut or snip the end of a cigar if you don't wanna take the rustic biting style uh, and you want something a little more smoother, a little more clean line uh, out of the end of the cigar. You right. And this is by Calibri. Are they a fairly well-known brand? Yeah, so Calibri's been around for a long time. They actually went through a company change. Um, they uh, went out of business and then got rebought um, and, uh, and restarted the line. So they're reinventing themselves in the last couple of years. I've got another one here by Calibri. This one's kind of got a, a, kind of a rubbery uh, feel to it here. So this is the sporty model. That's like the executive. Yes, you have the executive, you have the sport. I really like this. Uh, I mean, this rubberized feel on that is just... Uh... <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you really feel like you're holding on to something here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, and it's real solid too. Well, let me, let me do this. I'm going to grab a cigar here. And uh, here's a cigar. This is from uh, 13th Floor Cigars. They're a local company here in Arizona. Why don't you demonstrate perhaps the uh, cutting technique here on this beautiful... Uh, Cigar, handmade cigar. Sure, so let me, uh, uh, leave me an ashtray here. Gotta get the tools here. Yeah. That's, by the way, uh, that ashtray would impress the guys that put up Stonehenge. Yeah. I mean, that is a large ashtray. Not designed by aliens, but good. Yeah. So you have the, uh, the cutter here, you wanna open it up and make right. sure that it's exposed. Now, when you're cutting a cigar um, with a straight cut, there's a cap on here, and typically you wanna cut to the bottom of the cap. Um, you know, you don't want to cut too much, uh, otherwise you're losing valuable smoking area, and you don't want to cut too little. Valuable because, smoking real estate. Yeah, that's right. Right. Uh, too little will, you know, could damage the wrap on the cigar, and it'll start to unwrap on you when you're right. smoking it. So, All right. So I usually look for the cap line, and then you just place the cigar through here, lightly get it measured up, and then give it a good whack. That is a good cut, and that came off pretty cleanly as well. Yeah, pretty cleanly. And I guess, you know, it's practice makes perfect on any of these sort of things as well. It does. And uh, it's also the, you know, the quality of the cutter and the sharpness of it, you know, could also help. Right. Now, uh, Zycar is another company here. I'm going to grab a different product here. This is, this looks different. In fact, I kind of, I, it took me a second to figure out what this is. It's another kind of cutter, uh, but it has like kind of a cat's eye look to it here in the middle. Again, this is by uh, Zycar, another company. Yeah. A big, big accessory company. Yeah. Zycar is, is mainly uh, known for their lighters. Um, and, and cutters. And, and, and what's this one for? So this is a, what they call a V-cut. Uh, the, the design here is, it's got a, a, a riveted edge that slices into the cigar. So when you hit the head of the cigar, it does not cut it flat across. It actually channels it with a, with a deep V. Now, 
what, are there advantages over a straight cut to a V cut? So cutting the scar is personal preference. There's 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 several different styles. There's you know you can do the straight cut. Um, you can use a V cut. You can use a punch. Um, a punch. Yeah. All right. Uh, and, or they <laughs> you smack the cigar in the head. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah just you mean like, like a hole punch, sort of like yeah, a, like, like a, a three ring binder type thing. Exactly. Okay. Uh, punches in the end. So it's just a personal preference. It, a lot of times, uh, people there's you know two major reasons I, I find that people really like. I mean, one is the the way that the smoke comes out changes by the, how the uh, how the opening is on the end. For instance, with a straight cut on a cigar. You get you know all the full smoke coming from the beginning to the end uh, out. When you have a uh, when you have a, a V cut or um, or a punch cut, you get a little more resistance out of the smoke, or the smoke gets funneled more at the end when it's when you're pulling it into your. So mouth. it actually changes the cigar experience. Yes, it changes the dynamics of how the cigar hits the palate and the. Why don't you let me grab a, another one here? Uh, I'll grab this. This is a uh, uh, Panacea, another beautiful handmade cigar. Uh, by uh, Panacea, give uh, give this a, a cut here. One of the things that's nice about a V cut. So yeah. right here we have this is a rounded head cigar, but right. there's also cigars that are torpedo end, right? Right, they have pointed end. And and ironically, See, I knew that. Yes, that's the Very torpedo, happy. the pyramid, yeah. or the bellicoso. It's called. Ironically, the the V cut is a really excellent use for uh, for a torpedo. For a torpedo, yeah. Okay. But it works on, on any kind of cigar. Absolutely. Well, sure. people don't even think of it as a torpedo for a torpedo because of the way that it's cut. Right, it's got that, it looks like it's, this one, it looks like there's less choice as to how deep you go, it's kind of fixed. Right, exactly. It's fixed so you don't get the groove too deep. All right. Which is really easy, so you have the, you have your flat spot here, you just put it all the way in, press, and cut. Oh, look at that, may I? Yes. That is, I don't know if you can see that here, but that is like a perfect, like you say, it's a V cut and it goes a little deeper, but it doesn't take the whole cap, doesn't take the whole cap off. Right, the other thing that people like about this is that uh, in, a, in a, a short filler cigar where right. there might be some loose tobacco, it also helps to keep the tobacco in the top of the cigar and not get into your mouth and resonate. Mm -hmm. This is, uh, that was a good cut, which to me, this is a really nice, uh, you're, like, you're, you're liking this one. I do, yeah, because I mean, it's, it's sharp. Right. I, I mean, you want, a, you want a sharp cutter. I, I like that. It's a good sharp cutter. That really, that, I mean, it's, it's a very, very clean. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I noticed, by the way, the cigars that we're using here today, these are not um, uh, main brand, mainline brand cigars from Cigar, General Cigar, or any of these big companies. These are all, I mean, I, I, some of these are local. They're made here in Arizona. But these are all very small little boutique uh, uh, cigars, you know, places that make a pretty short run. They're not. They don't make millions of cigars a year. Is this a big trend uh, in the industry now, where 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 there are a lot more and more of these little boutique brands? You know, I wouldn't say it's uh, it's necessarily a trend in the industry, but um, th there's people that are making cigars for years. Uh, I think that uh, it's kind of like a micro brews that have just kind of re you know surged into the market, where people have their own twist or their own way to to. Uh, to make a cigar, have a flavor added to them. Uh, really, the uniqueness about cigars is it's it's an art form. It's uh, you know it's like a wine or or uh, any sort of painting or anything that's a you know that has a real tradition behind it. So um, you know there's a lot of that in the market, and and it's you're, we're, we see it a lot. Um, the other thing, as big business starts to grow with some of these bigger cigar companies, a lot of, a lot of stores are migrating towards more of the boutique lines um, to protect the integrity of the pricing of the cigar and really, um, you know, the value of, of a handcrafted well, cigar. And it's also, it's kind of adventurous. I mean, anyone can go to a bar and get a Coors or a Bud. Absolutely. Or even a Heineken. Yeah. You know, even, even one of the better known, you know, Heineken, you know, not as big as, say, Bud, but it's, but it's still a very well-known brand. But often you can go to these little places where you get these tiny little microbrews that people have never heard of, and you might find like a gem that you really like. Yeah, and that happens uh, quite frequently. Um, you know, I travel a lot, and I always try to find the cigars that I have never seen before to try something new and different. Um, you certainly find diamonds in the rough all the time, and uh, you know, and some of them have really made their way into uh, into a mainstream that started as a boutique line. Really? Yeah. yeah. So let's uh, move on now. Uh, we've got one more uh, cutter here that I want to look at, and that's this. These are uh, this, I have a, like a little Leatherman tool that does this. It opens up into a little pair of pliers. But this is a, uh, another tool. Again, this is by, uh, by Zycar. And uh, this is a tool that it's, it's like scissors. I've I got to tell you, they feel really high quality. But it also, I'm assuming, probably more than the other two, requires a little bit of skill to use. Well, uh, the scissors are nice. Uh, they're convenient. 
Hey, you got some extra tools on here too. A little screwdriver. Yeah, there's, there's a little a, poker. There's yeah. a screw. There's a bottle opener there because, of course, you want to enjoy uh, your Absolutely. favorite uh, your favorite bottle of whatever. Yeah. So the thing with the scissors or any cut, you know, you want a quick, clean cut. You know, if you're if you're going too slow, sometimes uh, you know you'll end up you'll tear or pull the wrapper rather right. than cut it. So it's a little harder to cut fast with the scissors, wouldn't you? Think? Yeah, it would be. So they would have to be very sharp. Um, and there's there's definitely a lot of varying brands of scissors on there. Um, you seem to have a nice smooth action. I'm going to put you on the spot here. Let's grab another one. This is uh, this is another local brand here called uh, Panna, Panna Cigars, and uh, I noticed that this is a very unusual cap. It's got a little pigtail cap here that I thought would probably make it very difficult, for instance, to use the V scissors yes. there because they won't fit down. So this might be a good example of where scissors, like you're holding now, would uh, would would uh, work well. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and you're right. It's it's called the pigtail and that's uh, you know, just the, that the design of that. Nice. One of the other things uh, that's good with the scissor cut is people as they're smoking cigars and right. they, and maybe they they're they get halfway through and they want to save it. Right. It's easy to cut off the back end too ah, right. so to save it for later. Whereas with uh, some of the uh, uh, flatter cutters here, I just got to pick up this one because it's uh, made out of carbon fiber. Some of these, uh, uh, this one was rather large, but some of them may have, uh, the hole may not be small enough to actually get it all the way over the cigar. Yeah, the, the worst part is I usually end up burning my hand because you you have a, uh, if you have your cigar lit and you're right. going to cut the end off of it, such as like this, right? You got the hot end going into your, your hand. Right <laughs> in your hand. You don't have that issue with the scissors. That's right. Right. So give us a shot here. Why don't you uh, uh, snip this cigar with so the So very uh, scissors. similar. You're looking for the same line around the uh, around the end here. Right. You just get in there. Just a nice clean cut. That is a nice clean cut. Look at that. Beautiful. And they they look pretty sharp. How did that feel to you? It, uh, it was good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I, I was a little worried when it was starting to, to go in, but once the uh, once the tobacco broke. The rest of the cut was very nice and smooth. Right. There's, uh, there's a, some, you know, well-made scissors are really nice and light. I like them. Again, also uh, by Zycar. Yeah, right. it's a Zycar. Zycar is cool because, you know, their product sometimes is a little more expensive, but they have uh, a lifetime limit, uh, lifetime warranty on all their stuff. So anything goes wrong with it, you just yeah, send it you want to go cut baling wire with this and send it back to them, they'll replace it. Right, right. Probably, <laughs> probably baling wire doesn't smoke quite as well, obviously. As, uh, yeah, it's a little, it's a little tough. Had the draws a little rough. All right, so we're going to come <laughs> back in a moment, and we're going to look at uh, some lighters and some other tech that we've got here from uh, some of these companies. So we've got a lot, lot more uh, coming right back. So please stay tuned. In today's fast-paced world, it's vitally important that young people develop a good understanding of how computers operate and how the internet works. LittleGeeks.org takes donated computers, refurbishes them, and then provides them to underprivileged kids at no charge. It's our goal at LittleGeeks.org to make sure that no kids are left out of the digital revolution. To find out how you can help, please visit www.LittleGeeks.org. Thanks a lot. And we're back and uh, continuing on with Dean D'Astasio from Blue Smoke here in uh, beautiful Arizona. Uh, now we're going to get into looking at some lighters. And here's where you really get into some high-tech uh, stuff here. The first one uh, we've uh, been sent here is this is by Blazer. And this is actually called the uh, Pocket Micro Torch. And I, and I see there's a, a big trend right now to going towards these, I'm going to light this up here, uh, lighters that look more like a welding torch than the old Zippo lighters that, you know, you, you used to see uh, with cigars and oh, with cigarettes and such. Wow, look at that! I mean, that is. <laughs> I think you could uh, lay some pipe with that. I, I, yeah, you could certainly uh, weld some copper pipe and uh, and do some plumbing. So why are these so popular? Well, the uh, the torch flame is a lot more popular than the old flame of uh, the standard flame of, of the old, and it's just uh, it it gives a better, cleaner burn. Um, also, you know, the Zippos or the other butane lighters that just create a standard flame right. also can, uh, can leave a, uh, an odor of, they can impart of, a taste. Of, the, of the butane. Right. Um, this tends to burn a little hotter, a little cleaner, right. and so you don't get that odor into the flame. Plus, you know, a cigar uh, has so much tobacco in the end, it's not always the easiest thing to light. And so you want something that's consistent, that's hot, and that can round the edges and make, you know, give you a nice, clean, It looks like you've got a lot of control with this. I mean, you can point this anywhere you want, you know, it's, mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, it looks like it's not affected by the wind nearly as much. 
Yeah, that's the other thing too. Nobody wants to. It's uh, got a little childproof lock on it. If you it, ever tried nice. to light a cigar, like when you're camping and you're you're outside and it's windy, it's, it's tough. It is, especially with matches or something like that. So right. I mean, it's it's really because a cigarette helps. only requires a couple of seconds of contact. But that's correct. Lighting a cigar. So in fact, let's show people what that's like. I'm going to hand this to you, and actually, I'm going to I'm going to uh, try to learn from your uh, demonstrations here. I'm going to uh, grab a uh, a uh, another uh, cutter here and uh, cut another cigar. So this is a, uh, this is a, by 262 Cigars. This is called the Ideology. Gotta love how these boutique companies name the cigars with you know, these very cool names. We've got the Ideology and, and the 460 and a bunch of other. Yep. Well, this one uh, by uh, Casa Gomez was the, uh, uh, or oh, we're coming up here, we've got is like the Havana Sunrise. Yeah, yeah, well, it's, so I'm gonna all, try it's all this part here. of the mood. Well, that's right. It's the atmosphere. It's like wines, you know, uh, very much like uh, wine. This is uh, another cigar, uh, cigar cutter by uh, Zykar. This one is uh, part of a collector series. It's got this cool um, imprinting on the side here. And again, you pull this down and it goes like that, makes that little sound, which I really like. And I'm going to try here uh, cutting this off here. So I get down here a little bit on the cap. And I don't think I did as good a job as you there, but, uh, but it doesn't look too bad. Nope, what do you think? good. So uh, perhaps you can uh, light this up. Show us the uh, proper technique of using this torch to light this uh, wonderful cigar. <clears throat> so the main thing is uh, you want to pull it up just a little higher. The main thing is you want to toast the cigar. Uh, toast you know, it. Yes. Uh, it, the idea is to uh, is to create a you know a heat environment. Let toast the cigar, burn it. Not. Uh, Traditionally, like lighting as you. So you're say. not really sticking the flame right on the end. You're more like uh, you are, but it's more like if you're at when you're camping and you're toasting the marshmallow for that nice golden brown effect, and not right. throwing it right in the flame to let it, uh, you know, craze up. Show us uh, how it's done here. So I <clears throat> start the torch up, and then what? I usually, now you don't you don't even stick it in your mouth at this point. At this point, I usually just toast the edges a little bit, wow. and I want the whole cigar to get a little bit toasty, just to kind of edge it. And by the way, you couldn't do that with the standard lighter, the way you were aiming it down like that. Yeah, it's helpful if you can go straight into the front and you want to get all the edges up. Then once you're pretty good toasted around the outside, then you can go for the light. When you light, you have the cigar uh, in your mouth and you want to rotate the cigar so you get a smooth, even burn around the whole side as you're lighting in. That is, and look, you know what's amazing to me is just how um, even you got that light. I know a lot of times it's frustrating for people that, like I used to do, go to Vegas and grab a cigar off the tray and you try to light it, and it is, you know, it's very hard to light or it lights unevenly, only half it gets that, and it goes out all the time. Yeah, and, and it's, one of the, uh, it's one of the complaints of smokers when they're um, reviewing cigars or smoking, or, oh, it had a bad burn to it, you know, it burned up the side. Well, a lot of that can also be at the way that someone had lit that or the type of torch that you're using to light the cigar, um, you know, would create a bad burn. So you want a nice even burn so that, you know, you're ready to go. Well, let me uh, move on to a, a, um, a different one here. That was a single... Uh, flame uh, lighter. Uh, I'm going to move on. This one uh, is another lighter by Calibri. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me uh, show folks how this works. You flip the top open, and when I light this up, you'll notice they're actually, wow, that just sounds good. Can you hear that? I'm trying to burn myself here, but I just like the sound of that. This has got three, um, three jets. Uh, are there advantages to a three jet over the single jet that we just saw? Quicker light. <laughs> you get a little quicker, obviously. Yeah. Um, but what about, I mean, it must go through the fuel. Absolutely, quickly. yeah. So you're certainly gonna use a lot more fuel with a triple flame lighter. Right, and this one, this, this lighter by Calibri, I notice in the bottom it has this bit that pops out. Uh, this must be one of those punches. That's what we were talking about earlier. That you were yes. talking about before. Mm -hmm. So maybe, what I'll, let me grab another one here. Um, and this is, uh, again, this is uh, by uh, Casa Gomez. This is a Havana Sunrise, again, another little boutique cigar. Um, why don't you show me how this punch would work to cut uh, one of these cigars? So the punch is really nice, and what's convenient about it, that they put them on a lot of lighters or keychains. So you don't have to carry a second thing around. Right, because sometimes the cutter can be a little heavy. Right. So the punch basically just goes right here in the center. Right. I use a, I use a thumb. Put your thumb on it. So I can get you know even pressure. And I just twist. A little bit of spinning action there. Yep, because you want it to cut in instead of, you know, push the tobacco. Right, and, you want to slice. Yep. And then you just pull it out. Oh, look and at that. what it does is it takes a, uh, a nice... Little divot. Yep, just right. a divot off the top, and then leaves you a nice solid round hole for the smoke. So and when you close through. that up, will it eject that little hole? Uh, in most cases. There it is, look at that. There's your little, little end cap. 
And then you have the triple flame. Do you want to try and light with a triple flame? You want me to try to do it? Sure, uh, yeah. Uh, sure, why not here? This is, uh, okay. <laughs> now, so, the thing with your, you know, because it's a triple flame versus a single, it's going to have a lot more heat. So your toasting action, you just want to, you don't want to, you know, burn it. I don't want to burn it. So I'm going to just hold it here, do a little toasting kind of around here, trying yeah. to uh, toast it like the master over there, rotate it a bit. Yeah. I think you're about ready. About ready, and now, um, Good, yep. Did I destroy that or is it, uh, how does that look? I may have burned a little more than it's you. It's a little toasty. <laughs> and, you know, my wife has the same complaint when I try to make breakfast. So uh, everything comes out a little bit like that. But that's, you know, but that's the difference too. It I felt mean, like it was going fast because you've got a, absolutely, you got a yeah. lot of power so coming out you got three there. times the action going on. So, you know, it's just something you have to keep an eye on when you're using a triple flame versus a single flame. But that's why people like it as well too, because it, you know, it'll light a lot faster. Right, right. Let me uh, kind of get you to put that on the ashtray over there. Yep. And then, uh, you know, th there's one more lighter here I just want to mention. Uh, when I, I noticed when I uh, picked up this uh, Zycar cutter before, uh, Zycar also sent us this lighter which has the same sort of um, design on it. This is another um, single flame lighter with a, uh, with a, and this is cool, look at this. Two punches. Now, why do you? Why would you have two punches? Just preference of uh, different size cigars. Both, either the size of the cigar or the airflow that you that you'd like to have coming through it, so you can reduce. Maybe for, for a longer cigar, do you need a wider hole to get a, a better draw? Not necessarily. It just depends on your preference. Uh, one of the other things that you look at when you're smoking a cigar is the draw and how well the airflow comes through. So sometimes it, uh, some cigars are packed very loosely and the draw is too light. So you want a smaller hole so you can restrict the airflow so you can get a you know, nice, even, comfortable so uh, feel. Obviously here they've got a cutter and a lighter. Do you see a lot of people buying these as collector's pieces or as a set because they, they find that? You know, it varies. Uh, <clears throat> some these, are not, these are not inexpensive either. When you, when you get these custom no. ones done, this is uh, you know, uh, you know, over a hundred bucks to get something like this. Yeah, so some people buy, uh, they, they buy the collector sets because they, uh, I mean, it, smoking cigars is a hobby. So it's just one of an, another accessory that goes with a hobby. Right. Um, a lot of them are branded with specific cigar brands that people are, are very fond of and enjoy. Um, and, uh, and they're also a great gift idea around the holidays. You know, it reminds me of watches. Uh, I, uh, you know, my wife bought me a fossil watch for a hundred bucks, yeah. but I know people that have, you know, Breitlings that cost 15 grand. Yeah and everything in between, and they all tell time. Absolutely, but there was, there's even watches branded with cigar uh, logos. Cigar branded watches. Yeah, I believe actually Rocky Patel is coming out with a brand of watches. Rocky Patel, a very well known cigar manufacturer. Yeah. So uh, that was great. The last thing we're gonna look at now is something that's not quite uh, a cigar product, but it's cigar storage. People probably have heard the term humidor. You store cigars in a humidor. Why do cigars need to be in a, a special box and what does that do? Well, uh, tobacco is uh, obviously it's an organic uh, plant, and because uh, that's let me stop you right there. That's a big difference between say cigarettes and cigars. Is that cigars are one hundred percent tobacco? They're all organic, right? Yeah. There's no plastic filter or paper wrapper or chemicals or anything. That's inside. correct. Yeah, it's one hundred percent organic, and and they you know they smoke at a at a very specific uh, consistency um, when they're kept well. Um, the other thing is, is in order to maintain the integrity and the flavor of a cigar, there's oils within the tobacco that need to be maintained, and, and that's through temperature and humidity. So what is the ideal temperature and humidity? You know, the, the basic thing is 70 and 70, that's what we say. So it's you know, 70, 70 degrees. 70 degrees, 70% 70 humidity. 70%. Now, that's just a, that's a big relative term that, you know, that we throw out there. But uh, we certainly, you know, you can adjust your humidity will, will change, your need for humidity will change based on the temperature, and, right. and you can have all of these great charts about it. But generally, uh, you know, if you, keep your, if you keep your cigars at a room temperature, and you want your humidity somewhere between, you know, 60 and 70, you're, you're good. Too high is not good, and obviously too low and, and is not good. So Zycar also sent us this. This is a, um, uh, a digital hygrometer. It's this little rectangular thing, runs on batteries. Mm -hmm. It's got a readout here, and for instance, right now it's showing that we're at 74 degrees here in the store, and Arizona, a, a very dry state, we're right now only at 23% uh, humidity, and actually I've even seen it. Yeah, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty high for well, today. Well, it's probably because we're, we're <laughs> in, in your store, in, in, you know, in, a, in around uh, some humid stuff here, but outside it'd probably be even, yes. even lower than that. So um, every time I've seen a, a humidor, it usually has like a round, 
hygrometer stuck in the middle, but have people trended towards these digitals now? Yeah, so the, the analog ones are, you know, you're basically looking at a coil right. that, uh, that expands and contracts based on the, humid on the humidity within the box. You know, it's, it's, it's a great functional idea, but it's a, they, it tends to lack in, in accuracy. They look nice. They do look nice, very right? Decorative. And very decorative. Um, but when we're looking at cigars, decorative just doesn't cut it sometimes, right. and it's really important that you have the you know accuracy. So yeah, uh, I always you know try to suggest people towards the digital uh, hydrometer um, because it's you, you get a lot. You know, you're looking at electronic, you know, um, accuracy. Accuracy, yeah, of the uh, of, of the humidity, which is really important. I mean, nothing. When you spend money on a hobby like cigars, right. uh, you know, your cigar prices can range from $3 to you know, $100, uh, and you don't want to ruin you know, you know, your collectibles, your hobby, or the things that you enjoy, and so uh, it's important to keep them maintained as best as possible. So Zycar also makes uh, these, and they come in a couple different sizes. These are uh, humidification devices. So you've got your box that will store the humidity, you've got your uh, hygrometer so you can measure your humidity, mm -hmm. but to actually maintain the humidity, uh, they have this. This is a box. It's, I, it may be hard for you to see inside here, but there's these little beads inside, little uh, bits of gel and stuff. What, what do these do and how do they work? So in here is a plastic uh, container and in the bottom is, is, uh, is propylene glycol crystals. And they're, uh, they're unhydrated uh, glycol crystals. So basically, uh, when you take one of these, you add a solution of propylene glycol as well, and uh, it rehydrates expand, the crystals, and right. they expand into bigger crystals, and they have a slower evaporation rate. Glycol is the suggested uh, use for hydrating your cigars. It, uh, it only evaporates to 70%, so you don't overhydrate. So it'll keep it right around that And also, it'll pull moisture 77. back out of the air if there's too much in, so uh, it'll maintain the level right where you need it. Right. Um, and then as it, uh, as it evaporates out, you can add more propylene glycol, and it, and it comes back up. Now, I want to wrap it up. Last question here. If someone is brand new to cigars, uh, you know, maybe they're here in, in uh, Arizona and can come down to see you here at Blue Smoke or wherever they are in their town. Is, is it uh, very approachable? Can someone come in to you and say, I don't know anything, I want to get my husband started? You know, what are you going to sell him? How much is that going to cost? Yeah, so. For a little kit. Is there a starter kit? <laughs> There's not a starter kit, but, uh, you know, we. Um We've often thought about having some cigar 101 classes. A lot of my vendors and reps come in and, and offer uh, you know those types of things. Um, a lot of my day is education with the customers. Uh, you know they come in, they want a suggestion. Um, they're very new to cigars, especially around the seasonal uh, times. You know, um, and we're all learning. Even myself, you know, after after several years, you're still constantly learning about the industry and about cigars. So, it's. Uh, it, it's it's very good for the novice to come in, um, you know, and, and learn. So you're, in most cigar shops, would you say, are the uh, staff and the owners very approachable? And they should be. Friendly, um, approachable, and they want to, they wanna, even if you know nothing, you shouldn't be afraid to go into a cigar store and, and say, I'm new at this, you know, what do I need to get started? That's right, yeah. And, and that's how, you know, that's how the experience should be. Cigar smoking is about, uh, it's a social experience with uh with your friends and meeting new friends and it and so it should be very social like that you should be able to walk in and you know and just get started right away well i know this has been an education for me today dean Destazio from blue smoke thank you very much for joining us yep. that's all the time we have for today but go to our website www.neo-fight.tv leave us a comment uh, let us know your favorite cigar your favorite bit of cigar tech or cigar gadget uh, or where you go and your experiences uh, with cigars, or go to our Facebook page, uh, facebook.com slash neophyte, and we're actually going to be giving away some of the uh, cigars and some of the uh, tech that uh, we've uh, uh, put on here today. I want to thank the folks that sent us the cigars. We've had uh, 13th Floor, Pana Cigars, uh, Casa Gomez, 262, and uh, Cigars, and Panacea, which uh, I know some of the folks uh, that are watching us right now maybe we're going to get to enjoy right after this. Yep. And if you happen to have an extra 30 seconds, take a look at this. If you need to make recordings of your computer screen, there's no better tool than Camtasia from TechSmith. In fact, you're watching a screen recording of this video right now. Camtasia can record your screen, your webcam, and high quality audio at the same time. It's perfect for training, presentations, podcasts, or any time you need to show what's going on on your computer. Camtasia is easy to use, but it's also extremely powerful. You can turn your screen recordings into high-quality polished video in no time and share them with the world.
and Camtasia is available for the Mac and PCs. If you need to make screen recordings to educate, train, or sell, there's no better tool than Camtasia from TechSmith.